those of you employing domestic staffs and manual laborers especially those of you in abuja please be very very careful this guy was ganged up by the people he employed they wanted to kidnap him and they ended up shooting him several times the story you're about to hear is going to leave some of you traumatized please be advised this is his story the next thing i heard they, they pointed the gun on my chest i was like begging like any amount we want i'll give you calm down now the next thing i just hear Pow! they shot me hi my name is abj korea last year november ending i was attacked by my workers they tried kidnapping me i was shot several times but thank god i survived it to share these stories with you i want you all to hear my story and be careful with the workers you bring close and the people you bring close abuja is not safe anymore and i want you to listen to my story i can't believe that your workers could plan to kidnap you how did this all happen can you tell us about this well i'm happy that i'm alive to share this story to everyone watching that was last year november after my birthday when i moved into the house i didn't even spend up to three weeks in that building and then these people came to attack me that was towards 7 7 30 in the evening not even late night so they came to the house but before they came i was at the master bedroom all of a sudden i started feeling hungry so i went to the kitchen to get something to eat while i was eating in the kitchen there i still i was feeling uncomfortable in that kitchen i don't know my spirit just said i should just go out so i went to the veranda of my house so i was sitting down there i was eating my spirit just told me turn off the lights that is the veranda light there I turned off the lights. So why I turned off the lights? Immediately I turned off the lights. My dog started barking. Very serious. So I went close to the fence to see why my dog was barking. Lo and behold, I saw one of my workers loading his gun with the bullets. Wow. Immediately he noticed I saw him. He shot directly to me. But he did not get me. I ran away. I ran to the back of my house. I called my younger brother to open the door quickly for me. So he opened the door. I locked the door. They started banging on the door, trying to break through the window. You understand? So this is where I did my house. You understand? But the the door, the door that leads to my master bedroom, I I did a protector, very strong protector there. I was trying to look for keys so that me and my younger ones would just move to the master bedroom and lock that place before they would get into that place to take them time you understand so they shot directly to my brother my younger brother the bullets did not meet him you understand so i became very scared i said with the force these people are coming they are coming i don't think they want to steal they want to you understand so i ran took my brother i told him to go to my master bedroom the toilet and stay so i was trying to like escape from that building so I used the manhole. I guess you know what they call manhole. No, I don't know. What that, um, that? Uh, how do I explain it? Manhole, this um, space they used to put in this, the roof, the POP. You see an empty space where you can use to okay, go through the roof. Okay, for electrician. For electrician, exactly. Okay, yeah, for electrician. I think they call it manhole. Okay. So I used through that manhole. I came out of the, um, I came to the roof there. So I made calls. I told them, my neighbors that there's robbers in my house. I even they tried to call police. You, do you know that police was even around before they even shot me? Police was around, but they could not go after them. They were even saying that they have to pay them for each bullet they, they, they shoot. Police asked, told you that you have to pay? Not money. me. They told them, my, our neighbors that if they, if they will shoot, they will have to pay them for each bullet that they waste. You How understand? Much? Say 5,000 naira. Per bullet. Per bullet. And they, they said they should go on with it. You understand? But they did not even come close to my building. You understand? So while I was up on the roof, so I used my head to hit the, the roof. I came out uh, came out of the roof. So I was hanging on the roof. While I was hanging on the roof, you know, people keep on calling me. You understand? They keep the on calling. phone was ringing. Yeah, my phone keep ringing. So I, I put it on flight mode and I threw the phone at the back of the house, thinking it would go at the back of the house. Unfortunately for me, the phone fell in the building. That was when they knew that I was up 
of the roof. So one of them climbed um, through my water safety tank and then made access to the roof. I was coming directly to me. He was holding AK-47 with cutlass. Jesus. So when he came close to me, that was where my fear left me. So while he was coming close to me, he now tried to use his um, cutlass to cut me. So I hit him on his hand. The cutlass fell. I took his rifle. On that roof there, I didn't even know how all those things happened. That, like, that strength was just came upon me. So I lifted him up from that top roof. I lifted him up. I used his back to land on the floor. I don't know if he's d but I believe he'll be d because they, after everything, they dragged him out. So they will not leave trace. So immediately we drop from the roof. You understand? I picked up his gun. I tried to shoot. Then I don't know how to shoot. I don't know there's something like uh, safety. You understand? So the thing did not come out. So uh, I just threw the gun. I started fighting with them because they surrendered. They surrendered me. They were like up to ten of wow. them. Jesus. You understand? So they started um, attacking me with the um, class. So I was trying to defend myself. I don't want the class to touch on my, touch on my face. You understand? So if they tried to hit it out, hit their hand. So they couldn't shoot because I know they, they can't shoot me because I'm around them. If they shoot, it will mistakenly hit anybody. You understand? So. I was hitting their hand. I take the class away from them. I tried to use the class to cut them, but it wasn't penetrating into their body. Wow. So I think someone came from behind and then um, cut me on my back and cut me class on my tummy. So my tummy opened. So I started running. While I was running, they now shot me on my leg. That is my lower leg there. They shot me. That was where star came out from my eyes. I fell down. I don't know what they were saying in Fulani. You understand? So I was like, eh, how much do you guys even want? If you want money, I'll give it to you and all. You understand? But, you know, I feel like they, they, since they are people I know, they will, they will not want to keep trace. You understand? Especially that you've recognized them. Exactly. So imagine you know, that guy that even shot, one of them that even shot me, do you know that I gave that guy, I dashed him 5,000 naira in the afternoon. That day? That day. Okay. And this guy still came back in the night with his group. His family, not even group. Family and some group of boys, Fulani boys, to my house. You understand? So the next thing I heard, they, they pointed the gun on my chest. I was like begging like, any amount we want, I'll give you, calm down now. The next thing I just hear, pop, they shot me. But I, I'm still asking myself, how did God do this? You understand? All the bullets, they shot me. The one they pointed on my chest, none of them met me on my on my chest. You understand? The next thing, they shot me. Several times. Pra, pra, pra. I think one of the, the bullet hit me on my hip, my leg. So, they now went inside to go and pick up the other guy that fell, I like, took up from the roof. They went to pick him. You understand? So they came back to confirm if I was One of them caught me again on my leg. So the guy wanted to shoot again the last time on my head. You understand? So I was not pretending. I was not doing... So they thought I was already So they had to leave. You understand? Because more forces are coming. You understand? That's when police started shooting guns. And now running with us when police now came. But before police came, everybody was still scared. Like 30 minutes, I was on the floor. I was bleeding from my head. I was bleeding from my hand. I was bleeding from my back. I was bleeding from my tummy, from my hip, my leg, where the gun hmm. hits me. <laughs> so I lied down. I was calling that they've gone, they've gone, they've gone. People should come and help me. I became very thirsty. You understand? So I just lied down. I faced my building. I said, God, after saying no to so many things, just to like serve you and you still made my life short. It's not better I just it's not better I just do the wrong opposite side of serving you and then um, end up having a shorter life. Like why would I stick to you and you still want to make my life short? I tried my best to stand up. I could not. The only thing I could do I could roll. I started rolling down. That was when the now came to my rescue. 
They rushed me to a nearby hospital that rejected me. They thought I was going to So that was when they now took me to National Hospital. They stitched me in a way they thought I was going to So they said that I need to get blood, I need to get this. We bought blood, we bought all the drugs. National Hospital did not give me my blood. They did not pass blood through my veins. National Hospital Abuja. National Hospital Abuja, they did not pass blood through my veins. I was in National Hospital for five days. I started complaining, I told my family that they should change the host this hospital, that this hospital is not ready to treat me. You understand? Even if I'm calling for help or I need water or anything, they don't even attend to me. Are you serious? You understand? The Those of you watching, can you confirm what he's saying if it's true? People I've that are watching, they, they, National hospital they will before. testify. They will testify. The, the drugs I bought, you understand? They, used, they took from my drugs and then my blood, picked my blood, used it to give to another person. They yeah, gave your blood to somebody else. Gave my blood to somebody else. I was very angry. They said they are going to give me back. Then why am I shouting? I told my brother that I've already yelled at them. You understand? That the next thing they will try to look for a way to me. And since I've yelled at them, I don't feel safe again. They should change the hospital. That's why they took me to a private hospital. When they came for my rescue, they said that there was no blood in me. It was just um drip that was going through my little blood and then drip that was going through my vein that if they remove that drip in the next 20 minutes i'll be mm. uh, before they took me to the hospital my brother came to me you understand i was like i thought i was going to die at that moment you understand so i was telling my brother i said this is who came to attack me baba and his children that stay close to the estate that they are the one that came to attack me you understand even that baba thought i was and when people now came close, he now came. He was like, hey, what thing happened? What thing happened? He's a full animal. man. Mm, he was not showing yeah, concern. You know, yeah, he was showing concern. You know, he was even part of the security in the estate. Are you serious? In Abuja, yeah. In Abuja, yeah. Jesus Christ. You understand? He, he, he was not like, and I told him that I was not telling my brother, Baba full on. I was saying, my brother wanted to kill him there before police now stopped him. They carried the Baba to the um, police station. I think they arrested some of them. You understand? My greatest surprise, police released these people without even letting me know. Are you serious? I'm telling you, they released Wait, these people. The same people that came to attack you. Exactly, police released them. I don't know the connection they have. Police people released them. So I was in the hospital battling for my life. So I said, let me keep that pending till You're I, out of the hospital. Till, my, till I'm out of the hospital. So I think I spent over a month and then two weeks in the hospital then i came out of the hospital when i came out that day i went to the estate so when i went to the estate i saw one of the guys that came to attack me so i went back i picked up police to go and pick uh, the guy uh, i tried reaching out to my ipo he stopped picking up my call and then went to another division to transfer the case you understand? They told me that I have to pay, they have to get a lawyer that will transfer the case out of there, that this one, that one, that I'll, I'll mobilize them. I said, no problem, I'll do that <laughs> since they are willing to to help me. So, when I uh, paid them, I paid them over like 200,000 naira for them to transfer the case from the SAS office in uh, Apodia to their own division there. So the our guy, he came to meet me, he said, don't worry, that's going to help me out, that's going to do this, that's going to do that. I was very happy that they were going to help me. So one of the Oga boys now called me, he said that Salah is approaching, that he wants me to buy a cow for his Oga. You've not done my job and you're telling me that I should buy a cow for your Oga. Same police are supposed to help you. Si police, not even helping me, like stop the insecurity going on in Abuja, you're telling me to buy a cow. So I said, okay, no problem. I just end the call and blocked him. This is sad, honestly. That was what this happened. This is really sad. Nigerian police, why? I yeah. went to um, I went to the uh, Nigerian headquarters. That is uh, this uh, headquarter headquarter in Gariki. Is it Gariki? That their first headquarter. Even that central area. That central area there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went there to it's complain. Scary complain to them that this is what happened to me, this is what happened to me. One police officer now came to me. He now told me he told me that I should let it go. He now asked me that do I believe in one Nigerian? I said yes. He said I should remove that thought in my heart. 
that there is nothing like one Nigerian that these people, even if they are poor, no matter how rich I see them, that they are the ones ruling Nigeria. They have people at the top that is controlling them, that you can't do that, I can't do them anything. That's what they told me. I was like, wow, this Jesus same Nigeria. Of this same Nigeria. This is unbelievable. People who live around the life camp, they can testify to this insecurity going on life camp. What is wicked doing Asokoro, about this? And uh, Guzapi, Jukwe, Kurudu. It's disturbing to hear this. Does this mean that we are no longer safe in this country anymore? No place. I mean, this is the federal capital territory of Nigeria. No How place can is safe. Like this be happening and then nobody's doing absolutely anything about it what exactly is wicked doing wicked is the fct and it's not even about showing off or you having money these people they go after anybody anybody anybody. it's not about staying low-key staying safe once they find a vulnerability they'll come for you the government they know about this if they want to stop this thing they'll stop it if you meet any high profile like most of the high profile uh, officers i've met they'll say uh, they would have loved to help me but they don't want to put their job at tricks you will hear different stories the government know about this i think they are making money from this that's why they are not even like what is oh god sometimes i even ask myself like who supplied these people gone all of them were armed ak-47 i don't know go and search how much search how much ak-47 is cost forget they are not ordinary bricklayer they are using those means to get information I think those means to get information. God will help us in this Nigeria. I, I believe a lot of people I, have gone through this process. Because even while I was in the hospital, I saw similar cases like my case in the hospital. There was a lady that they got her infected with HIV. They kidnapped her. I think she finally paid the ransom. So she, her own part of the story was uh, they were treating them malaria. Why they were kidnapped? Why they were kidnapped? They were treating them malaria. In the in the bush with one injection one syringe they use it to choke all of them like inject all of them that was how she contacted hiv she was saying that she wants to die that she can't live that she can't live with the virus and all a lot is going on in this country and the government is not even doing anything to stop this insecurity the way forward i feel like if law start working in this country if the law start working in this country that's when this country will be better that's when this country will be better Honestly, because the way I see the law now, anybody can. If you have any criminal cases, you can just go and pay it off, and they'll stop your case. Or if you have anything, they'll pay you pay it off, and they'll stop. Because what I heard, I heard that they bribed those police. That's why they released. Mm. That's why they released those people. Wow. And that the, those Fulani are still roaming about that estate. Their house is still in that estate. Police is not even going about it. Do you know I, I was working with one of the. You know, they said if you want to, if you want to get your enemy, you work with your enemy. You understand? So there was one of the Fulani guy that was close to me. He told me that if he knew that they were coming after me, that he would have told me. He opened a lot of secrets. He told me where the, that uh, there's a man that used to supply them gun in Abuja. That they will go there to rent the gun from there. If they kidnap those people, you understand? I don't know how they do it. If they kidnap them. You understand the ransom that they get they'll share it among themselves that that's what they do you know i gave police this information and police is not willing to work with this information jesus they said they have we a man gone. the man that used to supply them gone he even told me that all these hills i'm seeing in Abuja that it links to different places the asokoro they said they he said the um, asokoro only link to uh, jukwe the crew do only link to guzapi he said a lot of things. I gave. I even gave. I took the guy to, with uh, took him to to work with the um, police people so that they can get hold of all those people. Police did not go. Police did not go after him. If he's uh, one random person now, uh, they'll show their police, face. Police you, in have you not noticed it, that if they catch all these full and new people, they don't used to show their face. They'll cover their face. They'll cover their face. But, but if, if, it's they a can't, if it's a different people, they'll show, they'll their, show face. their face. And they'll f them up and they'll get if if you're looking for justice uh, if someone attack you from a different state and you're looking for justice you get justice immediately but it's from this other tribe you never hey goodness what is that if they arrest them on? if they arrest them they'll release them 
that baba that, that they released he was saying that his uh, his, his, uh, his his daughter married a corner that nothing can happen to him nobody will do him anything roaming about the estate freely the government is not even willing to go after them the baba that came to attack you. yes even th- with the information i gave to them i told them that i know the people that I used got the fulani guy gave me accurate information about the people supplying them gone i gave their information to them they did not work with it Insecurity is not a flourishing business in Nigeria. May God help us and keep every one of us safe. Even some of these police officers. There are some police officers that are willing to work, but they don't put their job. They are scared. They are scared. They don't put their job. They don't risk their job. Truthfully, I, I believe so. And you see, from what this man said, sometimes it's not about being nice to people. You can. He said he gave somebody five thousand naira that day. That guy. And gave that him same more. day, yes. the person came with gun to come attack him. So it's not about being nice, you see? As well. Hmm, God, please help us. So. <coughs> Who is the Moses that will come help us right now? Which of the apostles in Nigeria? Which of the prophets? Which of the pastor? Who is God going to send to come rescue his children? Because what is going on right now, man, is really, really crazy. We are oppressed and we don't know who is going to come help us. May God help us, bro. I'm grateful to God for sparing your life. I'm happy that I'm alive to share my story. And thank you so much for sharing your story. I hope that it will help the security agencies to to, to the take truth, their jobs. The truth seriously. is, if you keep complaining from now to tomorrow, police will not do anything. I feel like they might do something. They honestly. will not do if anything. There are enough people coming out to talk about it. They I want think they to are protect making money their from this. Even if they want to that. protect their name. If you are talking about it privately, nobody is going to pay attention to you. But once you come out publicly to talk about it, you know, they want to... The police is willing to work. I'll give them this information. I'll give them. They'll go and... They will not do anything. God, help us. (laughs) Your children are suffering. So messed up in Abuja, I swear. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. All right, guys. What do you think about the story? Kindly indicate in the comment section. If you've had similar experience or you know somebody who have had similar experience i firmly believe that by sharing stories like these people the citizens will be more careful in times like this i would advise that you take every possible measure to protect yourself do you understand god will understand trust me he surely will brother thank you so much for sharing this story i really thank appreciate you, you coming I'm happy I'm alive. to talk about it and I thank god walk. for your life I thought I was going to die, even while I was challenging God, I was saying, God, you need to take my life. But still, God still kept me alive to share my story. I hope this, my story will help. I hope the government will work. It's not just about sharing your story. I hope they will work towards this insecurity going Hopefully, on. it is by sharing stories like this that they become more aware of it. Do you understand? So, you know... It's it's a very sad thing, and uh, we'll keep on sharing more. Sometimes stories. I even I feel like maybe they are they are, they are stopping blogs from sh- uh, posting stories like this of insecurity going because you hardly see blog. I don't know why I, I keep asking myself why is bloggers not posting about the insecurity going on in the country. Mm, it might maybe it's my. There are stories you see on Twitter. You never see it on Instagram. You never see it on Facebook. It's because Facebook and Instagram, they they don't support certain kinds of posts so most of this blog will try to protect what they've been able to build by not posting those kinds of stories okay. in, in every possible way so i think that's why most of these people are scared because if anything happens to your platform I'm you sure have to start from start scratch from and nobody yeah, exactly. absolutely nobody's going to think about you because of course there are so many other blogs or platform out there so why would anybody be worried about you but i feel like if we have uh, this thing uh, this I, I don't think Nigeria have anything called forest guard. What's forest guard? Just like another force, security force, like they will be guiding the forest. I think if they have a forest guard in Nigeria. Okay, forest guard agency. Okay, so there 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 will be guards patrolling yes. forests. Yes, to guard. make sure there's no unusual yes, certain exactly, activity. Exactly. If they have forest guard that is guiding all our forests, all those hills, because that's the areas they used to come out from. You understand? If they are guiding all those things, I feel like the insecurity from the insecurity will reduce. Mm. You understand? The insecurity will reduce. Mm. True, true, true. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this very episode. Um, 
I firmly believe that by sharing stories like this, our leaders will be able to make better decisions. I have a meeting with a House of Representatives member who would like to come on my platform to talk about some of the challenges he has experienced with battling security of um, issues in Abuja. So you guys should look forward to that very video because I firmly believe that even though the police might be corrupt, there are certain people who are, are truly concise, they are willing to work. So as time goes on, we'll be bringing on these people to come and talk about the issue. This is going to be like a collective you know, effort. All of us have to come together to protect what we have. If some of us are not thinking about ourselves, we need to think about our future family, our future businesses, you know. These things are important. Alright, bro, let's say bye to our viewers. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! bye.